Hello guys, welcome back to ServiceNow 911. So in this video, you will going to learn REST Web Service, how to configure it, how to use it, parsing of JSON, and obviously e-morning integration. Let me tell you something about REST. So REST is a kind of web service which is used to integrate between two applications. In our last video, we have seen how to use SOAP. SOAP is also a web service. What is the difference between REST and SOAP? I will create a separate video for that after this video. So in ServiceNow, we use REST as a ServiceNow output. And it will allow you to have the following operations. Retrieve, create, update, and deletion of data from one system to another. So let's see how it works in ServiceNow. So I am going to integrate these two demo instances using REST web service. First of all, let's go to REST. Type REST here. And in system web services, you will see a complete module with REST. First of all, let's open this REST API Explorer. I think this particular page will provide you enough information about REST. Okay. So you see here, these are the list of operations which are available via REST web service. Retrieve, create, modify, delete or update. So all these are basic self-explanatory. So here we need the URL. So URL is the basic thing. It also known as endpoint, which we need from the second system in order to integrate. So let's try this one. Let's provide the table name where we want to do something. Let's say incident. First of all, we have to provide the query parameters. These are self-explanatory like sysparam query. It means what query uh, you want to give so that accordingly the record will be fetched. So let's say I'll provide active equal to true. All these query parameters are self-explanatory. But if you want to know more about this, you can go to this documentation link where each and every uh, parameter you see here is properly explained with what all value you can provide. You can add a new parameter as well because here only a bunch of parameters are given. Rest all are available here. So you can go through these parameters and you can add it here. But we are just testing, so no problem. So here it is the header. This is also important. So basically we need two headers most of the time and it is the request format and response format. It means that when we are requesting what format of REST body should go and what is the format of the response which we get. So in this video, we are looking for request and response as a JSON. So that's what we are selecting here. So let's do some testing. Click on send. As soon as you click on send, you see header accepted. This is the response. It is green, so generally green means OK. And here you see the response body. This is a JSON. And it is retrieving this particular incident and all the fields and all the values of this particular incident, whatever they have. So whatever we are doing in this particular REST Explorer, the same we will do in the scripting and the outbound message of service now. The only thing is that here it is retrieving data from the same instance that is from dev 125702. But in reality, the endpoint will be some different system. And in our case, because we are doing it for e bonding, this will be from this particular dev instance, dev 95794. So I hope you will get enough understanding from this REST Explorer. Let's go. To the actual rest outbound message like we have soap message here we have rest message i already have one rest message created for you let me open it and you know this is the instance which we are talking about and this is the endpoint of that particular instance now you will ask how i get this endpoint so in order to get the endpoint you have to go here Again, REST, REST Explorer. You see, this is the URL because 
both system are of service now so we can easily copy this and paste there and here we have to update the table name which table we want so what i did here i have used incident table so this is the name of incident table but if you are integrating with some other system means service now to non service now in that case the owner of that particular system will provide you the endpoints to integrate so do not worry so we know the endpoint we know where we want to go but how to go because we need some kind of authentication in order to get inside that system so for that we have this authentication as of now we have used basic authentication which means a simple user id and password that is user id and password of this 95794 so we already have this one so you see here this is the name of the user which we have created to authenticate and this is the password let me show this user to you in this instance go to user you see here this is at the top same one so now we have the authentication ready we have the endpoint ready and at the bottom we see the function we have added only get function but you can create a number of functions as we have seen here all these functions can be used let's open this get so here get http guest endpoint we already provided and authentication inherit from parent that is that is the one which we are using here in this test message then we have these two things which we already discussed http headers that is the request format response format we have to create this and http query parameters so here i have used these parameters you can use n number of parameters what are available here okay like sys param query sys param fields means what all fields i need in response i do not want all the fields but i want only number comma state comma description so in the json response we will get only these three fields for each incident whatever is coming so we are all set we have to test click on test the status is 200 it means green we are successful here we have this response so here you see here you see all the incident which are active true are coming here. is demo right now i am doing it on demand but you have to schedule it 
and this is the simple code okay so this is the one which we have copied from rest message and it is simple so the main parsing starts from line number 8 here we are creating a json object so so in the variable past data we are storing the response body which we are getting so now this past data variable will be acted as a json object which we can traverse so in line number 10 we are executing a for loop and it is going till the total length of this past data object so let's open this object so what is the total length this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 so in this way it will calculate the total length of this result once we are inside we are capturing the number description and state from each from each node of this parse data object like this one is at i equal to 1 this one is at i equal to 2 this one is at i equal to 3 i equal to 4 so in this way we are getting the values one by one and then we are doing the glide record so we get the data from the second instance that is this instance 95794 and now we are querying the incident table of this incident and we are querying this incident with number if the number we are retrieving from the second instance will present in the same this one in that case update the description of that incident so what we are doing is not that important the important thing is parsing the json so i think now you understand how to parse and json so in this way you can create a rest web service and do it on regular basis using script so i hope you understood all the concepts here with this node I am saying goodbye to you take care of yourself do subscribe to the channel bye bye